Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com in the topic of kinematics titled Up and Down. You might have guessed we're going to watch things go up and come back down. So imagine throwing a rock up, it comes back down, things like that. The main concept we're looking at here is acceleration caused by gravity. Okay, the Earth's gravitational field pulls other objects with mass, so as long as the object has mass, pulls it towards itself. And we'll explain that a little bit differently in the next unit when we get to forces. Okay, and in particular, we're going to be looking at things uh, in this concept builder where the only thing pulling on them is gravity. They're in something we call free fall, which is another concept builder you'll see. But first, let's take a look at some things in free fall. So here's a nice... Uh, Nice watermelon drop from UC San Diego. Thank you for showing us that. And here's a nice watermelon drop from the office. Uh, if you haven't seen the office, it makes me laugh a lot. So uh, anyway, it's the gravitational field. Both the watermelons are falling towards the earth. If you could watch them carefully, you saw, and it was hard from the angles we saw, they start off slowly and they speed up and they speed up. That's why it's fun to drop them from so high because they get going so fast before they hit the ground. Um, near the surface of the earth, uh, there is a gravitational field and that value is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, meaning every kilogram of mass, so if your watermelon was one kilogram, it would experience 9.8 newtons of force. If it was two kilograms, it'd be almost 20 newtons of force, okay? We can also, if you take newtons and divide by kilograms, which we haven't gotten to yet in my class at least, you'd get 9.8 meters per second per second, which we often write as meters per second squared. Notice, that is an acceleration. So gravitational fields, that number for the gravitational field is also the acceleration that it causes, 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to be the key to this. We, uh, we in my class will round it off to 10 meters per second squared. Um, you may be using 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, if you are, this concept builder allows you to use either 9.8 or 10. Just recognize I'm using 10. You'll need to adjust if, if you were asked to do the 9.8 level. All right, so there are two different things you'll have to do at the apprentice level. First one is vector direction. Um, keep in mind, while, while on the surface of the Earth, the acceleration of gravity and the force of gravity are always pointing down. Gravity never pulls you up, okay? Um, on the surface of the earth. So, uh, and then keep in mind that gravity will slow things down that are moving up. When you throw a rock up into the air, it slows down and slows down. And then it eventually, it stops for an instant, not for a second, but for an instant, meaning for no time period, but at one time, it stops. And then it begins coming back down. And as it's coming back down, it will speed up. Okay, so here's the first kind of question you'll see. Um, a ball is launched upward from the ground. The, the diagram shows the location of the ball at one second intervals. Okay, here's the diagram. So you can see it starts off at A. One second later, it's at B. One second later, it's at C. One second later, it's at D. One second later, E. Another second, F. Another second, G. Identify the direction of the vertical velocity and acceleration vectors at the indicated locations. Okay, so in this case, you're just recognizing, is it moving up? Is it not moving at all? Or is it moving down? Okay, and so um, in this case at B, it is still on its way up. So the velocity would be up. Okay, the acceleration, well, what did we learn? The acceleration is always pointing down. Okay, so down. Okay, D is at the top. At that instant that it's at the top, not even for a millisecond, but at that instant, it is not moving up or down. So at the top, it's always zero. Okay. The acceleration is, as always, down. 
That's a place a lot of people will make a mistake right here. They'll say that the acceleration is zero. Well, acceleration is telling you how quickly the velocity is changing, right? If, the, if, it, if it was not moving, zero velocity, and it was not accelerating, then it would stay there. And we don't throw rocks and find they stay up in the air. We'd have an awfully cluttered sky. Um, instead, they come back down. So the acceleration there must be down as well, because the next second it's going to be moving down. How does it begin moving down? Because it accelerated down. Finally, as we look at G, it's uh, clearly on its way down. Notice that these two, A and G, have are not touching the ground. In a moment, it will have a contact with the, with the ground, and then it will come to a stop. But right now, we're just talking about while it's in the air. So while it's in the air at G, it will be moving down, and it will be accelerating down. Okay? So that's this one. Of course, you'll have different uh, spots along the journey here. Um, so just make sure you're being careful as you look at yours. Okay, next. Sometimes you'll have to rank the speeds of them. Okay? Well, here's the basic idea. It's starting out at maximum speed. When you, If you were shooting this out of a cannon or throwing the ball into the air or whatever it might be, you throw it, and that's when it's at maximum speed. Then it slows down a little. We'll just call that mid. Then it slows down more. Now it's a low speed. And then up here at zero, then it starts to drop. Well, when things start to drop, they get to a low speed, they keep accelerating, they end up at a mid speed, and then at the bottom, they end up at a max speed. Okay, so keep in mind here, we're not looking at direction because we're doing speed, so we are not looking at the direction. We're not looking at positive and negative. So this is the maximum mid low, zero, low, mid, max. So we just take a look here. In this case, we're looking at C, D, and F. So C is low, D is zero, and F is mid. So that means the smallest would be the one that's zero, the middle would be the one that's low, and the greatest would be the one that's mid. Okay, because we didn't, we weren't given A or G as an option. Otherwise, those would be the greatest. So we still are doing C, D, and F, but now we're looking at acceleration. Well, what did we learn on the last slide? The acceleration of gravity, often represented by little g, is always 10 meters per second squared. Well, if this one's 10 meters per sorry, if this one's 10 meters per second squared, and that one's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared, and that one's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared, they're all the same. So you just tap here, and it'll make them all say same, and you'll be good to go. That should always be true for the acceleration. All right, moving on to the master level. Yes, you have now become a master. Okay, so now you're going to draw vector diagrams. Well, you're actually given six of them, and you'll drag them into place. But I'll draw them, and you'll see the idea. So in this case, we're going to look at B, C, and G. You could look at any ones. I believe it always gives the vector, the velocity vectors as red. Okay, so I'm going to draw all the velocity vectors here. So this would be the biggest. This would be next biggest. This would be little. D would not have a velocity vector. E would have a little velocity vector. F, a mid-level velocity vector. And I did not leave room. I don't know if that's going to go off your screen. This should be the same size downward vector as that is upward. Okay? So I didn't have room. I didn't leave myself room, but hopefully you get that idea. Then um, we also have, the, have to draw the acceleration vectors. Well, we know acceleration is always down. And we know g is negative 10 meters per second squared. And so we draw the same sized downward velocity vector for every single one. It should always be the same size. Okay. Uh, one last little interesting fact. Since this is one second between d and e, if it's accelerating 10 meters per second squared, that means it's going from zero meters per second to 10 meters per second. So this, uh, whoops, this uh, velocity vector should be the same size as this acceleration vector. Here it should be twice as long because it's had two seconds to accelerate, and here it should be three times as long. Same thing this way, this should be three times as long, two times as long, and the same length as the acceleration vector. 
All right, so that is the master level. You'll have to drag those over for a couple of them. All right, clear selection, move on to the wizard level. You've now become a wizard. Okay, so a ball is launched upward from the ground and it gives you a speed. Well, if it's launched at A, we can just write this in for A. Uh, let's use orange, orange is a fun color. So here it's gonna start out going upward at 30 meters per second. Okay, um, its location at one second intervals is shown. Determine the vertical velocity and acceleration. Tap and tap and tap the, tap the table cells. It's probably supposed to say to toggle between possible answers. So you'll tap on these instead of writing them in. But remember, g is negative ten meters per second squared. So that's going to go in all of those. Okay, so all of those will be negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, so now if we go from A, which is 30, I'll leave the units off here, I'll put them in the table, um, and then we're going to change by negative 10 meters per second every second, it'll go from 30 to 20. We changed by negative 10. Okay, and then as we go from B to C, we're still accelerating at negative 10 meters per second squared, or negative 10 meters per second per second. So we're gonna go negative 10 meters per second different than the 20, which will be 10. So this will be 10 meters per second, okay? I'm gonna stop filling out the chart. I think you got the idea. So then we go by negative 10 more, that takes us to zero up here, zero meters per second. Then on our way back down, now we're going down, so we now we have negative 10 meters per second negative 20 meters per second, negative 30 meters per second. Okay, now not all of them start at 30, but whatever they start at, just subtract 10, subtract 10 more, subtract 10 more, and you're at zero. Okay, whenever you get to the top, you should be at zero, and on your way back down. This is the one where uh, if you were asked to by your teacher, you'll be using g equals 9.8, excuse me, negative 9.8, meters per second squared. So you'll start out at something like 29.4, then you'll change, you'll subtract 9.8, and you'll go to like 19.6, 9.8, and then zero, okay? But that's the only difference if you're using that. Alrighty, that is uh, the end of that concept builder. If you uh, did great on it and enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to answer those and help you out with that. And um, have a great time. We'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.